Hello, this is Mark Smith with Family Tree Counseling Associates, and I'm here with my weekly video. This week's video is called Marital Indentations. So you might wonder <laughs> what in the world the topic really is today. And the topic today is about a wedding ring, a ring that uh, I wore on this finger for about 27 years. So uh, I'm going to start by reading uh, some of the, my blog this week and then I'll uh, sort of expound on why I'm talking about that particular wedding ring. I had been contentedly thrashing around in the water of my icy marriage for what seemed like more than two and a half decades that it had really been um, I had hoped that the pain that we were going through, my former wife and I, would drive us both towards the warmth of recovery and effective therapy and insight and, of course, uh, reconciliation. But when it became clear to me that that was just not in the cards for us, I had to let go and I plunged into some waters that were even icier and more scary than the ones of, uh, you know, the icy waters of the, of the marriage. Uh, I longed for warmth and forgiveness and stability and redemption. But sadly, um, given the therapeutic uh, paradigm uh, that our therapist was using and that my wife was um, sort of married to, uh, we really couldn't uh, shift gears and uh, salvage the marriage that we had. Uh, folks, a really talented therapist, a therapist with a paradigm of there are no victims uh, in marriage, who's courageous and articulate and bold and caring and will make the therapy room safe. Uh, that can take a marriage that was doomed for a divorce and turn it into a marriage that can be rebuilt and workable and new and shiny and, and really be something that's a blessing in two people's lives and then everybody around them. So this, this ring finger had been a pretty contented prisoner for well over two decades. While the marriage lacked some in warmth and equal partnership because of my counter-dependency and control, um, it was calm and it was respectful and it was the wellspring for three gorgeous, wonderful uh, kids that I love very much. We really did have a great family with uh, innumerable heart-warming memories. Many wonderful vacations and just funny times with goofy little kids. The reason I referred to my finger being a prisoner was that I had not been able to take the ring off for many years. When I got married <clears throat> at six foot uh, two uh, inches tall, I maybe weighed about 165 pounds uh, on August 15th of 1981. But I've by, by this time uh, that the marriage ended about uh, six years ago, I had added 75 pounds at least through the years, and I couldn't get the ring off. This beautiful golden token sealed with a kiss now represented a broken relationship. And the truth is, I had to have it cut off. By the way, I'm at uh, Eagle Creek uh, Park in Indianapolis today. I was driving by after dropping my son off at the airport, and I had some time to, to work. And I apologize, there might be some uh, people making noise in the background, but uh, you know, you folks know how much I like the water. So um, I, I dropped by when I was growing up. My best friend, his name was Joey, and Joey Balala, and he was an Italian fella, and he worked at a, a jewelry store in Kokomo. And uh, one day, about six years ago, I stopped by his old, where he worked at the jewelry store, and I, I asked them to cut it off. So this, this ring uh, had to be cut off. 
because it just was no longer appropriate for me to wear it. So getting that ring cut off was a very painful process. I'd been comfortable and happy uh, wearing that ring. So it was really more of a, a sadness than a relief when the freshly cut, slightly twisted gold medal finally was extricated from my finger. And uh, my, my finger felt naked. Uh, the weird thing was, if there was like a breeze, my finger right in there where the ring was could feel the breezes blowing on that skin because it was very sensitive. It took me several years to get over and to not have the physical indentations. For years, I, I, I had a, you could see where the ring was. It was like a indentation where the ring was. And so after several, two or three years, you, you couldn't see that anymore. But it's taken over five to remove the indentations from my heart. Uh, marriage is meant to be a lifetime thing. And it's taken over five years to really not remove completely, but to greatly lessen the, the deeply etched indentations on my heart from marriage and family. Um, I had loved my former uh, wife and best friend uh, with a very innocent and sincere love since 1979. So to have the marriage and precious time with my children and my psychological balance and my financial health and my good name all cut up, as it were, with the ring, I mean, it really was a horribly excruciating experience. So that the marital shrap metal, this, this golden ring, uh, was then tucked away in a drawer where uh, actually it was somehow lost fairly quickly. It just seemed to disappear into thin air like uh, those good years of marriage and family had seen, seemed to just go up in smoke uh, like the ring disappeared. So these days, both my ring finger and my heart are no longer indented, and they are at peace as they prepare to be fitted with a new ring. Um, last week on a Saturday morning, uh, I proposed to my beautiful protagonist, my sweetheart, my uh, what I call my sparring partner, my new best friend of five years plus, um, because we've we've built a, a spirited uh, relationship uh, through couples therapy and partnership building. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of anybody doing this, but honestly, I actually uh, uh, proposed during a therapy session because uh, uh, my gal's name is Betsy because Betsy was really being vulnerable and showing her wounded little girl. And as she did that, it was actually not even a couple session. It was an individual session she was just happened to be sitting in on. Um, uh, it just really moved me, and it became clear that she could really use more tangible commitment, and I was already there because I had seen her really grow in her non-reactivity and her objectivity and her insight into herself and her ability to communicate non-reactively. So in spite of the fact that uh, marriage is a painful thing and love is a painful thing and you're going to pick somebody who's a replica of the people who hurt you the most, and that's bad news in my case, um, I trusted her enough and I said, well, honey, would it, you know, help you any if I put a ring on it? She said, yeah. And I said, well, okay then, will you marry me? And the therapist about fell out of his chair. He said he'd never seen anybody propose in a therapy session, but if anybody's going to propose in a therapy session, it's probably going to be me. And uh, my gal actually found it sweet and romantic. And then we left the... Um, therapist's office and went about 10 minutes to the Circle Center Mall in Indianapolis and we walked in the first jewelry store that we saw and I bought the ring that made her eyes sparkle. Uh, there was some that, you know, oh, this is good, this is good, but this one really made her eyes sparkle and I said, okay, 
and let's buy that one. So I knew I'd uh, reached a level of safety and commitment that required me, uh, that made me safe enough to put a ring on it, so to speak, as the song goes. That safety and con commitment was not a result of falling in love and natural chemistry or attraction. It's not a result of magic fairy dust or good luck in love. Uh, I have not had good luck in love or discovering my one and only soulmate. All those things are fantasies. This commitment uh, in this safety was built brick by brick with hard work, determination, self-awareness, messy, reactive, ugly fights, Imago Dialogue, which I strongly recommend, many therapy sessions, a lot of really cutting insights, um, a whole, a whole sea of, of tears on her part and on my part, and a mountain of heart-rending, very sincere, very genuine apologies. Both my fiancé and I are bound and determined to not have to take off another ring or cut off another ring, but to take these rings and wear them, you know, to our graves. So, um, and then there's a little picture in my blog of me with my gal taking a, a, a carriage ride after we got engaged last week. So, hey, listen, um, marriage is hard and life is hard. And um, uh, people have asked me, you know, uh, how I feel after getting engaged. And I really don't feel any different because I'm not in a pink cloud where I think that everything's going to be great and we're going to be so happy because we have this this engagement in this ring. Um, what I know is it's going to be really hard and it's going to be really painful. Uh, so last week, uh, Betsy and I, were, were, we went to the movies after we got engaged and there was uh, we went to draft day, which by the way was very good. Uh, I might blog about it. Um, but there was a line in the movie that Kevin Costner was talking about what a very difficult day he had had decision making wise and he said sometime the torturous road is the right one and Betsy and I just looked at each other and just laughed and laughed and laughed because we both know that sometimes our relationship is very difficult and torturous um, I'm an introvert and I I pull away and I write and I, I I'm in a profession that consumes a lot of my social energy and then and then Betsy feels abandoned and then when she feels abandoned she can be reactive and act like my my dear mother when I was growing up and yell and scream and carry on be irrational so that's our cross to bear um, so I really encourage people to take your time uh, in dating and know that there is no love ever after that's easy and know that um, you're going to have to work really hard. I had a fella come to me uh, two years ago, the week before he got married, and he was, he was sort of getting cold feet a little bit and he was wanting a, a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down in one session. And uh, I was gathering all the information and I, I really didn't have time to give him feedback because I hadn't figured it out yet and I wanted him to come back but then he got busy with the the, the wedding went and went ahead and got married well um, got a call this week and the fellas back in uh, several things have come up in the marriage that that are deal breakers that are huge issues that could have been foreseen and corrected before you uh, took a jump off of that uh, bridge or that diving board so um, and, and hopefully uh, he and she will be able to roll up their sleeves and do the hard work. It's just better to build a foundation of interdependency and hearing each other non-reactively before you get married. Getting married in our culture has become sort of a, a magical thing 
and and uh, very few people, in my opinion, very few people really know the other person, and really know their demons, and really know your own demons uh, before they make that commitment, and then they feel ill used when these demons show up and start their mischief, and they certainly will do that. So. Uh, uh, that was my take on uh, marital indentations, and many people in midlife, uh, they have been through a marriage, and they, they had a family, and there was some, some happiness involved in that arrangement, but there was enough unhappiness to blow it up. But you're going to need to really uh, open up your heart and your blind spots to feedback from a lot of different directions if you're going to build something solid that'll last for a lifetime the second time around. So if you have not joined our YouTube channel, I really want to encourage you to, to do so. We are, have uh, over 800 uh, subscribers now. We, we get about 100 a week lately. And we, as a channel, have gone over 101,000 views. So we're real excited. And this week you should watch because Jerry Wise, who hasn't made a video in six weeks, made a video and he's a rock star. So also uh, my books uh, on abandonment issues and shame. I mean, those are the two big killer issues that people struggle, struggle with. And that's what I started with in, in my writing career, writing about those books. Uh, I also have some smaller books uh, about counter-dependency, affair recovery, and what's that other book on marital issues? So um, you can get all these books at FamilyTreeCounseling.com. So uh, thank you for watching the video today, and God bless.